Hello, it's Tim Kanak with Perkins Roofing, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between Florida Building Code and High Velocity Hurricane Zone Code, or HVHZ for short. Florida Building Code for short is FBC. And if you are new to Florida or you're new to homeownership and you haven't built anything yet, you might not know, but Florida is one of only two states in the United States with two different codes. Florida and Louisiana, that is. So Florida has two different building codes to abide by. And depending on where you live or the property that you have, where it's located, you might have a completely different code than another property you might have. So basically the way it works is that every three years in Florida, the code is updated for both Florida building code and high velocity hurricane zone code. So last update was fall of 2020. So the next update is going to be fall of 2023. As of right now, the difference in location between high velocity hurricane zone uh, and uh, Florida building code is Florida building code applies to the entire state minus two counties. High velocity hurricane zone is Miami-Dade and Monroe counties. Oh, sorry, Miami-Dade and Broward counties. Monroe County, the Keys, kind of uh, is left off the map, uh, more or less. Uh, they are supposed to be high velocity hurricane zone code, but they have a little more flexibility to do whatever they want because inspectors, engineers, yada, yada, they all say, Hey, uh, if a hurricane hits the keys directly, you're kind of just out of luck. There's really nothing that can be done <laughs> to protect you. Uh, just do the best you can. So unfortunately, if you're in the keys, Monroe County, love it. <laughs> Amazing place, beautiful place, but, uh, it's tough to survive a direct hit from a hurricane there, uh, for your, for your property to survive a direct hit from a hurricane there. I know a lot of people like to ride them out there. Um, best of luck. <laughs> okay. So, uh, high velocity hurricane zone is Miami Dade County and Broward County. And then also kind of included is coastal Palm beach County, which is basically anything in Palm beach County east of highway 95. That is basically coastal Palm Beach County, which is a little more flexible. That depends more on the local municipality, whether they're going to enforce high velocity hurricane zone code or if they're going to be enforcing Florida building code. So Palm Beach County, coastal Palm Beach County has a little more flexibility on what will be enforced. So Perkins Roofing here, we have our main office in Miami that serves Miami, Dade and Broward counties and also Monroe County. And then we also have our secondary offices in Palm Beach County in Jupiter. So our secondary offices provide the option to clients who are other elsewhere in the state outside of high velocity hurricane zone code to either do the roof via Florida building code standards or upgrade to high velocity hurricane zone standards and now you probably don't know what those upgrades mean or what they entail or if it's worth it so that's what this video is going to be is i'm going to talk about the differences between the two codes why and how high velocity hurricane zone is better and where it's actually not better because uh, there is a section of the code where the florida building code seems a little more stringent right now that is supposed to change in 2023 and also we are looking at possibly adding new counties and new areas to high velocity hurricane zone as we progress further into the future and we see other damages like in uh fort myers and cape coral and port charlotte due to hurricane ian it's possible we could see the west side of the state start adapting high velocity hurricane zone as well Really all the coastal regions should. I'm gonna show you a map over my face right now so that you can see uh, the areas that I'm talking about because you can see that the wind patterns um, are high even on the west coast and they don't have high velocity of hurricane zone yet. So it's very possible that these areas with these higher wind patterns, 120 mile per hour plus 
will all eventually be high velocity hurricane zone, probably nearer in the, in the near future, uh, more likely than far out into the future. So if you have a home in these regions, you might wanna get ahead of the curve and go ahead and do that high velocity hurricane zone roof right now. And if that's your plan, then you wanna hire someone like us who have been doing this for decades uh, rather than someone who has not because we've been working with these codes since Hurricane Andrew in 1991. One of the first big differences between high velocity hurricane zone code and Florida building code is the sheets of plywood that are allowable. So you see two sheets of plywood here. These are both 5 8 inch CDX plywood, which is required by high velocity hurricane zone. You see the thickness? And Florida building code, it only requires half inch plywood. So you get an extra eighth of an inch in high velocity hurricane zone as far as code. While I don't currently have any drip metal in stock to use as, as an example for you for this demonstration, I do have a piece of sample aluminum panel and I also have another piece of plywood. So imagine this is the edge of our roof, right? Usually it'd be like this, and then we're gonna add a one by two wood nailer. So imagine this is our one by two wood nailer to help push the water away from our fascia. We're gonna turn this upside down so it kind of looks like a drip metal. Our drip metal here in high velocity hurricane zone code must come down three inches minimum. I've done even four and five inch drip metals or larger, like custom, like seven to eight inch ones. So it has to come down three inches right here for high velocity hurricane zone code. In Florida building code, they only require two inch drip metal to come down from the wood nailer. Even my house in Palm Beach, I only have two inch drip metal. I wish I had three inch, but that is an upgrade option for high velocity hurricane zone is using three inch drip metal rather than two inch drip metal. Now the other differences in metal Number one is gonna be the nailing pattern. All the nailing patterns change, which we'll talk about shortly. But in high velocity hurricane zone, when nailing this on, you have to put a nail every four inches. In Florida building code, you only have to nail every six inches. So when you're nailing this on, you're only gonna have spacing like, like that, like every six inches. Whereas high velocity hurricane zone is every four inches, so it might be like that. Now, when it comes to L-metal, Let's find a wall so we can use an example L metal here. I'm gonna use our same sheet of metal. Got a nice spider here hanging out. Our L metal, you see right here? Let's say this is our wall flashing. In high velocity hurricane zone code, you need to use a five by seven L metal. So it's gonna come five inches up the wall and seven inches back down onto the roof. In Florida building code, you only have to use four by four. So it's gonna be four inches, four inches. So four inches on the roof and four inches at the wall. Florida building code, four by four and high velocity hurricane zone, seven by five. Hope that makes sense. The next thing we're gonna talk about is nailing patterns. So we'll start with shingles first. You see here, we've got a shingle board from certain teed architectural shingles is what usually what we use. In Florida building code, each shingle that you're gonna have, which is lar larger than this, closer to about here, Florida building code only requires four nails per, sh per shingle. So boom, 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 boom on the nailing strip. High velocity hurricane zone requires six. So you're gonna have 1.5 times the fasteners in high velocity hurricane zone because you're going from four to six for every single shingle. So it's going boom, 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 boom. So instead of four nails per shingle, you're gonna get six, 1.5 times more fasteners. The standard nailing pattern is also going to be four inches on center for high velocity hurricane zone. So four inches on center, nails every four inches versus six inches. And now nailing patterns and fastener patterns change based on the height of the building. So the higher the building, you know, if you have a 20 story building instead of a one or two story building, you're gonna have 
higher wind uplift codes that you need to meet. So you're gonna have different fasteners, um, fastening patterns that you have to follow based on the height of the building. Where's the perimeter? Do you have a wall perimeter, a parapet wall that is going to stop wind from hitting the eave? Or do you have an eave roof like this, or like this if it's flat, where the wind, here we we'll our table's an example again, where the wind is going to push and try to push metal off the roof, your perimeter metals, or whatever's on the eave is gonna try to push it off the roof. If you have a wall that protects the roof, that can help with wind uplift and you might not need to meet uh, the same fastening patterns to meet the engineering necessary for that code. That's why a lot of the higher flat roofs, like the bigger buildings, they might have, if they don't have a metal roof, they might have a parapet wall on the roof, which not only is nice walking on the roof because you're not gonna fall off, uh, but it also helps stop that wind uplift from hitting the edge of the roof and pushing up. Because the standard zones on a roof are one, two, and three. Zone one is the field of the roof, which is like the middle of the roof. Zone two are the edges or eaves of the roof. The perimeter is zone two. And then zone three is the corner. So if you're at the very corner of the roof, let's say this is our roof. If you're at the corner, this is gonna be zone three. Like you have a little box here at zone three, then this would be the edge. So this would be zone two. And then in the middle here is zone one. So that's kind of what you're looking at in a standard roofing zones. But a high velocity hurricane zone now has added zones so there are more zones depending on different structures of the roof. So if you have chimneys and little stuff coming out of the roof, it can be different zones um, or different little cuts. So if you have different cuts in the roof, depending on the shape of the roof, you can have zone, uh, different zones uh, instead of just one, two, and three for wind zone and high velocity hurricane zone now, which I haven't even memorized. Uh, it every roof is different, so it depends on the roof. And uh, that's why our engineering team and our permitting team have to look at all that stuff and make sure that we have everything down pat. Uh, easier said than done. One of the odder flavors of Florida building code versus high velocity hurricane zone is that in a way, shingle and metal roofs are more difficult or better roofs in Florida building code than in high velocity hurricane zone code. Let me show you why. For shingle roofs, the standard option is to install a 30 pound paper, tar paper like this, on the wood deck. That's gonna be mechanically fastened, so it's gonna be nailed on with roofing nails and tin caps. So here's our nails, this is what our tin caps look like. So that's gonna be our first layer, and then all we have to do after that is install the shingles. So that's our standard shingle roof in high velocity hurricane zone. Now we can always upgrade by adding a secondary water barrier, but it's not necessary to meet code. Shingle roof in Florida building code has multiple different options. Option number one, and this is what we do, is we install a self-adhered paper over the deck. So our plywood joints, our whole deck, is going to get this paper over it. This is MTS Plus. This is our second option. What we usually like to use is Polyglass IRXE, which I don't have a sample of right now. So we would put this though, and it comes in a much larger roll. It's gonna come in four foot roll. Uh, so it's gonna cover the deck, the wood deck, and it's gonna cover over the seams. So you're not gonna have paper like this over the seam, it would cover it like that. But you're gonna get that paper over the wood deck. And this is 60 mils thickness. It is much thicker than this 30 pound paper here. So you're going to be getting a better system. And this is self-adhered. So basically peel and stick. It's not as simple as peel and stick. Once you peel the film off, you need to apply heat and pressure for it to stick. So you peel the foam off, the film off. Sometimes in Florida, we have enough heat just from the sun. It's getting into winter now, so you might have to add a little heat with a lister sometimes. And then you just roll over it with a weighted roller. 
and that gets to stick. So that's actually a better system than just putting the 30 pound over it. The other option, or the, no, option number two, would be to install two 30 pound papers. So instead of just installing one of these 30 pound papers here, we would install two and the rolls will be staggered. So all the seams on the 30 pound will be staggered. You start with a half sheet. So basically we would install two 30 pounds. So two 30 pounds, it's better than one 30 pound. I still like the self-adhered option better because even though this paper is more expensive, this is closer to $100 a roll, whereas this stuff is only like $30 a roll for the 30 pound, so this is more expensive. One of these is more expensive than two of those, but save on labor costs, so it makes it more efficient than just putting the 30 pound. Option number three is to use two synthetics instead of two 30 pounds, which I'm not a fan of the synthetics because they're pretty light. I think they tear easy. The 30 pound, depending on the paper, some of the 30 pounds are really good and don't tear that much. Some do tear pretty easily still, but still stronger than the synthetics. So I don't recommend the synthetics. They're cheaper, which is why people use them. But if I'm gonna use two papers, I'd rather just use two 30 pounds. Um, so that's my second go-to option is the two 30 pounds over the, self, or over the uh, synthetics. And then the last option is to seal the joints. So basically, instead of using this paper over the whole field, they make a four inch tape that I could just put over the plywood joints all the way down the joints. And then after I do that, install a 30 pound on top of it, which that's okay. It's not that bad if you have plywood, but a lot of older homes, basically anything from the eighties and below don't have plywood as their decking. They have instead one by six or one by eight, by eight tongue and groove. And imagine sealing these joints on a six by piece of wood for the whole roof. It doesn't make sense. So my preferred options and the way that I build my contract is number one, self-adhered over the deck. Number two, 230 pounds over the deck. Number three would be the tape. This is a plywood only option, but doing the tape with the 30 and number four, the synthetics, because the synthetics, as I've stated, are light, they tear easy. Not the go-to option, even though it's the cheapest. Now, the interesting thing about the metal roofs is that it's basically the same setup. You have the same four options as you do with the shingle roof. We have a different paper for the metal roof. This is an XFR versus MTS and IRXE. We're a polyglass contractor, so we mostly use polyglass products. But let's say this is our wood deck. We would stick our self-adhere down over the wood deck. And then we're gonna install our panels over the self-adhered. So it's basically the same options as doing uh, via shingle roof. But what we could do is instead of stealing, sticking this down to the deck and then putting this over, as we can do it like how they do in high velocity hurricane zone, where we would put a 30 pound paper first. So we're gonna put the 30 pound paper from over there, down to the deck, mechanically fastened with nails and tin caps. Then we're gonna put our XFR, which is a fire and a water barrier. This counts for insurance reasons as a secondary water barrier, not a, just a regular fire barrier. Because you can technically put 30 and versus shield and then put the metal over it which is how you can do it in high velocity hurricane zone. Down here, if we put 30, you can't just put 130, we'd have to put two and put the fire barrier. So here we would do 30 XFR and metal. That's how you do it in high velocity hurricane zone. And you can upgrade to high velocity hurricane zone in Palm Beach if you want. Palm Beach, you just put this to the wood like this. Now, something that needs to be understood is if we're doing aluminum, rather than the steel. So if we have an aluminum panel instead of a steel panel, you have to put two fire barriers because aluminum is more likely to melt. It's more, con uh, I can't think of the word right now. Conductive, I wanna say. It sounds like a word for lightning. Uh, but it's more likely to melt 
in the event of a fire. So you have to put two fire barriers, not just one. And that's when maybe you wanna do two Versa Shields, but the Versa Shield is only a fire barrier. This is a fire and water barrier. The Versa Shield is only 24 mils thickness. This is 80, 80 mils thickness, like so far. So now let's talk about tile roofs a little bit. It's a little bit of the same concept. Where in a tile roof, we can put the peel and stick, the self-adhered peel and stick. We can put that direct to the wood instead of putting the 30 pound. In high velocity hurricane zone code, just like how we discussed with the other roofs, kind of with the metal, we have to put 30 pound paper, then our TU plus, which I'll show you a sample of what it looks like when it's out of the roll. And the 30 pound has to be mechanically fastened. The TU plus is self-adhered. So we can put that with the tile on top. That's how you do it in high velocity hurricane zone. And in Florida building code, what you can do is you can put your self adhere. This is what the TU plus looks like. And we use TU plus, which is 80 mils over um, other products, which are a lot of the standard tile underlayments are 60 mils, so cheaper. This is much better. It lasts longer. We don't have problems with it. I like giving you a roof that's gonna last. Um, even if it is a tad more expensive and it makes my prices a little more expensive, it's worth it because I avoid headaches. I avoid insurance claims and lawsuits by putting on good roofs instead of cheap roofs. So, wood deck, we put our, take our film off, peel our T plus straight to the deck, and then put our tiles straight on top of the T plus. So that's how we would do it in uh, Palm Beach, in the Florida building code. You don't have to put the 30 pound. Now your other options, which I talked about in some of my tile videos, if you wanna go back and watch my tile videos, is you can put a secondary water barrier, which polyglass MTS, you would put that straight to the wood, and then you would stagger the TU plus over it and then put the tiles and the foam is gonna to stick to this. And you can see these layers in some of my other videos, uh, my concrete versus clay tile video, I talk about it. And also I talk about it in my uh, video, how to install a tile roof, where we're installing roof tiles in South Florida. So basically it would be staggered like that on top of the wood in Florida building code. The difference is high velocity hurricane zone is gonna have a 30 pound mechanically fastened underneath. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about flat roofs. So let's pretend like this is our flat roof deck. In high velocity hurricane zone code, we need to mechanically fasten a base layer to a wood deck. And flat roofs can get confusing because a lot of it depends on the type of deck. Almost all sloped roofs are gonna be a wood deck. Shingle, metal, tile almost always is wood. Now, whether that's plywood or one by six or one by eight tongue and groove is another story. That usually depends on the age of the structure. I have seen sloped concrete decks and sloped uh, metal decks. When that happens, if you have a sloped to metal deck, we almost always need to redeck it with plywood. If you have a sloped concrete deck, there are some products that have NOAs to apply directly to the concrete, like the Polyglass TU Plus, we just have to prime the deck first with PG100 primer and then stick down the TU Plus to the concrete. We don't have to mechanically fasten anything, even in Miami-Dade. So same thing in Miami-Dade, if this was concrete, imagine this is concrete, all we would need to do is a two-ply system where we prime the deck with asphalt primer, stick down our SAVFR, and then what we can do is we can either stick or torch down our cap sheet on top of that. Concrete deck, boom. Works the same way in high velocity hurricane zone and Florida building code. There is no difference in concrete deck install in between high velocity and Florida building code. Now, with a wood deck in high velocity hurricane zone code, we have to install a base layer mechanically fastened into the wood. I'll show you, I have a roll of the paper right here. This is polyglass lasso base. 
can see it's a thick roll. This is a sand paper, so the sand part is going to be touching the wood. And then we have our nail lines here. So this is going to be what goes down on the wood deck, on the wood in Miami-Dade. That will get mechanically fastened to the deck following the nailing pattern, depending on the height of the building as previously discussed. After we put that down, we put down our self-adhered, boom. And then we either put down our self-adhered or torch. Wood decks, I prefer self-adhered to torch because I don't like burning buildings down. And there's always that risk with an open flame and wood. So much better to self-adhere. And the funny thing is the self-adhered with polyglass actually has a better pull rating than torch and hot mop systems. So the self-adhered, if it's installed correctly using heat and pressure, is actually better than the open flame or the hot mop versions. So take that to the bank. Um, self-adhered for the win. Technology, right? Okay, so this is going to be our system with the elasto base under it for high velocity hurricane zone. In Florida building code, we have a couple of options. Option number one is going to be to do it just like high velocity hurricane zone code, which is the most expensive option. I prefer that. And I provide that as an option to all my clients on any flat roof. Option number two, if we have plywood, what we can do is we can install an SAV tape. So it's actually kind of looks like this, where we would tape the seams of all the plywood. So all the plywood seams, we get this tape that runs out every single seam, crisscrossing all ways. Then we put down our SAV. Then we put down our cap sheet. So that's how we would do it if you have plywood. Now, if you have an old one by six or one by eight roof, this is where we run into problems. Nobody wants to be taping one by sixes and one by eights like that because you're gonna be basically just putting a whole other layer down on the deck. So what you can do if the building is one story or below, so if it's a house more or less, what we can do is we can prime the wood deck with a product called WB3000 from Polyglass. And after that, we can do boom, SAV, boom, SAP. After the deck is primed, much easier than putting this on, on the tape, on the wood, one by six or one by eight, or even the plywood, it's easier to just prime it. So that would be our options for Florida building code. I still prefer though, the upgraded version of putting the base sheet and these two. So I'm always gonna recommend that to my clients. It is a little more expensive, I understand that, but it is a much better system. I know there was a ton of info in this video. I'm gonna add some subtitles and stuff like that to hopefully uh, help it make sense. Um, if you have questions about if you're in Florida building code or high velocity hurricane zone code, check out the map at the beginning of the video or just reach out to me uh, or reach out to my offices. You can call our Miami Dade office at 305 MIA roof and you can call my Palm Beach office at 561 559 roof. If you have questions about where you fall on the code, or if you have questions about doing a high velocity hurricane zone roof, the benefits of Perkins roofing. If you're hiring in Palm Beach and you want a roofer to do HVHZ, we've been doing it for years. Uh, the other roofers up here are probably giving you the cheapest version of the roof, which hey, that's our business model. I like to give good roofs, not cheap roofs. So if you have any questions or you need a new roof in Florida, we are operating on the West Coast right now. So if you have, I have, I have guys over there right now. So if you uh, have anything in, I don't know the counties on the West Coast, but if you're in Fort Myers, Naples, uh, Cape Coral, Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, and you need your roofing done and someone local is telling you that you're on a wait list. So hang out for four, six months, eight months, a year, two years. Uh, I've seen it before. When the Hurricane Irma hit in the Keys in 2017, uh, there are people telling me that they're on two-year wait lists. And the roofers are going to tell you, yeah, you're in line, you're in line. They're not going to tell you when because they don't want to lose your business. So they're just going to keep you on that wait list. If you want to get your roof done now, give us a call. We are more than happy to send guys over there to do your roof on the west coast of Florida. Thank you for watching. Please, as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel and... Um, 
Give us reviews on Google. Uh, check us out. Give us a call if you need roofing. We appreciate everything. And thank you for watching, as always. Later.